Well, hello, everybody. Red Dirt Preacher. All right, Laney around the house here. Y'all want to stick to Layman Laney? That works out pretty good. I like that. Anyway, uh, so I'm just going to, you know, fly from the hip for a minute while y'all scoot and gather, gather in. Gather in. So I'll hide the hole in my name with my hat. That's what, that's what class is. That's classy where I come from. All right. Anyway, all right. So I have actually been sitting here for like, I don't know, the last 30 minutes plus debating on how I'm going to tell you guys this story. Okay. True story. <laughs> I think that I'm definitely finding, uh, finding my way as a spiritual storyteller. And this, the, the stories that I bring you, ain't going to lie, it's because I have a spiritual, I have spiritual gifts. Just say it, just say it, bleh, just say it. I got spiritual, I have spiritual gifts. Earned, <laughs> I have spiritual gifts. And these spiritual gifts are the gifts of what the pineal gland brings you, a spiritual mantle, clear audience, clear Cynthia. And things are, I can hear it, I, I can, I got a walkie-talkie to Christ. Plain and simple. Um, been, been, you know, pineal gland, it's like a movie theater. Side note, let's go over here for a second. Red Dirt Road. Um, if you close your eyes and you think of the memory, go ahead, it's a little exercise. We're going to find the pineal gland in the middle of your brain. Okay, not something you can normally feel. You could feel your belly ache. You could feel your back itch. You could feel your eye twitch. You could feel your tooth hurt. You could feel a lot of things in your body. Can you feel your intercostal muscles moving? No. Can you feel your pancreas working on that insulin? I don't think so, Bob. You know, if you do, you're superhuman. Can we feel what part of the brain we're doing math in? I mean, do you actually feel that? No, not really. But watch this. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right. Think of a memory. Good, bad, ugly, big, not. Just go get a memory. First kiss, you fell off a bike. I don't know. Go get one. It doesn't matter. Okay, now play the memory in your head. Keep your eyes closed. When you play that memory, where is that projection screen happening? Most of you can raise your hand up and touch somewhere on your skull right now. If, even if I'm not in the room, point to your, your skull somewhere in there. Where's the movie theater? Where did you see that projection screen? Okay, when you're daydreaming, where is that projection screen? That screen that did that just now. What you did was you got in a time machine and you went backwards and you could smell grandma's garden. You could see your mother's skirt. You can you if you hear the, the, the hum of the tires. You can, you just went back. When people think we have to build a time machine, that's hilarious because we are a time machine. You just did what I like to call a dip back. Yeah, think of it as a memory or not. Okay, where that pipe, where that happens at in your brain, you're like touching back here. Like it's, Lenny, it's like three or four inches in. It's like right here. You know, if you're touching right here and trying to like go into like, okay, it, that's the pineal gland. It's in the middle of your brain. Little bitty. Our brain is perfectly symmetric on both sides. And uh, two halves make a whole. And it's this meshy pink. The only thing in our brain that is singular that is crimson red is the pineal gland and we all have one it's the medicine cabinet of our minds um uh, but it also does a whole lot more just like the heart to a doctor with my heart on the table my heart only does so much but if you ask me the woman ask me what my heart did while i was breathing see okay <laughs> all right so our pineal gland is real okay let's drive back to the main road here we are hi good to see you did you bring your pineal gland all right, so anyway, it's a gift. It's a gift, and the Lord uses that gift to, to give us spiritual visions. We see those visions, I do, from that same place that you just saw your memories from, okay? So I can, I have the ability, I think we all have the ability, just grow those muscles and stretch them. Um, I have that ability to see, and when I see things, I don't see them out of my eyes. I see them out of what people like to call their third eye. That's my pineal gland. We all have them. And, you know, <laughs> religion's not going to keep me from using it. It's not pagan to understand that my brain has a pineal gland. And what I, I understand that it does is what it just did to you. It houses a lot more than just a medicine cabinet. Um, so... 
Um, when I see visions that are given to me by Jesus, by the Lord, I see them from the same place you just saw memories. And that's just a little bookmark so you know how the, my mind works. That's where you get the visions. When I say I see stuff, that's where I see it. I close my eyes or I look to the left and kind of just stare at the carpet, you know, and I'm actually a thousand miles away. I'm in my mind and I'm watching something happen. And then when I get done seeing that vision, I come back to you and I say it. I tell you what I saw, and there's a lot of resonance to the things I see. It's like, how did you go back there and get that? You're only 30-some years old. You weren't living back then. How did you know that? That's the gift. That's the magic. Amen. Amen. Anyway, so I wanted to invite you to stick with me here on the porch this evening. As I probably tell you, part one, part two, part three, I have an ongoing story to tell you, and it's powerful. And it's something that I experienced as a vision, and I saw it. You know, so, um, and I need to share that experience with you. And, and I was just letting you know, like, this is how I work. You know, I've had a lot of great visions between me and the Lord, and he showed me some amazing things. And we've been on, on amazing walks. I've been on a thousand amazing walks with the Lord. And all of these walks have brought back wisdom, which is riches. It's like that of the pomegranate tree. You're eating off the, off the tree of wisdom. You come back, you teach it, preach it. You come back, you illuminate it. And the story of where I've been is all I'm telling. So for religion, people that say, oh, you can't be a preacher, you're a girl. Well, don't damn and shut my mouth in silence. The devil would love that. I don't think I'm preaching. I'm pretty much telling you big stories about where I've been. I'm running back and telling that. You know what I mean? I'm not keeping a secret. And I don't mind the crush of the ego that makes me look crazy. I gotta look crazy. I don't mind that. That's where, the, that's where God's at. Okay, that's where God's at, the, over the crazy line. Let's take another little dirt road. I've said this before, but I think I need to say it again. Look, the devil knows that you don't want to be called crazy. Boo, that'll get you removed and put in a straitjacket. You know, that'll, that'll, that'll distort how other people view you, and some of us are chained to how other people perceive us. What a, what a bitch-ass way to live your life. Right, that's okay. It's cursy church. I got your attention. Hi. All right. So, yeah, what, what a coward way to live if we're just going to live our lives on what other people might think of us. But see, the devil knows this. Is it against us? We don't want to be looked at as crazy. Oh, my God. What will people think? Oh, oh, oh. I'm not bitch-ass to that. I'm sovereign to myself. I don't care what people think, and that's a real statement. You really can't care because God, where God's going to take you is crazy land. Okay? All right, you better not care what other people think if you want to go far in God. You want to go to the curb and God, that's what churches are for, all right? <laughs> you want to go to the ridge, you're going to have to get a horse, put on some war paint, patches of power, take a journey and know who you are in him and scream, I am, on your way out the door, right? So um, anyway, there's a little doodad. Um, anyway, so just know that like, I'm just letting you peek into, into how I work. And I, I, a lot of you know that I work this way. It's just a prophetic gift that I have and it goes off in my mind and the things that I see are really, really amazing. And that all the stories of where I've been in the Lord and what I've learned, what he taught me, all the stories are what are, that, that is all the times that I come to the porch and sit and talk to you guys in these little sermonettes, these little powerful pieces or parables. You know, it's not because I'm a badass. It's because hanging out with the Lord, the living Lord, the living spirit makes me look like a badass. Doing the spiritual work with Jesus is what makes you a badass. And so I don't sit here alone and look like some great teacher. If I look that way, great, because that's what I am. And I only am that because I am who I am through the I am. I wouldn't be nothing if it wasn't for the Lord teaching me. He's still a great teacher and a counselor. Amen. And hopefully me sitting here just doesn't, it uh, doesn't show me off in my intellect and all that. Hopefully it just, it shows who God is. It glorifies him. Um, you know, the fact that he's still alive and teaching layman's, you know, that's great. So I have a great story to tell. It's a huge girthy story, you know, so bring your popcorn, your tea, your vices and gather up on the porch. Get out on the porch tonight. All right. And I'll see you guys in about 10 minutes. Okay.